Hello and welcome back to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel, your source for all things Everton. My name's Thomas, uh, joined again by Terry McAllister from the Toffee Blues and once again by Charlie Gregory uh, from Manchester Evening News, who's joined us again to talk a bit more uh, about the Salford result last night, uh, of course, second round of the Carabao Cup. Um, early lead uh, with Michael Keane, kind of nine minutes in, game kind of went into a bit of a lull from there, but picked up again in the second half, ended up being a 3-0 win. Um, glad to see us in, well, I say it in the half for the next round, we know who we'll get already because they do these pre-draws, which are... I never really get, but uh, against Fleetwood in the next round, happy to go through a uh, very rotated squad. I think there was 10 changes in the end, so pleased to get through in the end, but uh, I'll come to Charlie first. What were your kind of, you know, uh, initial thoughts about the game? I thought it was an interesting one, really. I think from the lineups, obviously, as you say, it was quite rotated from Everton, so there was a few inexperienced players, but also a blend with some that you could almost call veterans of the game. You know, your Theo Walcotts that have got nearly 400 Premier League appearances, so I think it was quite nicely balanced. Um, Salford lined up strong, plenty of experience of their own in there. Um, I think they they put on a decent show of themselves. I feel like three 0 potentially might have flattered Everton, even though Everton hit the woodwork about fifteen times. Um, but no, it's it it definitely an interesting game to watch. Uh, yeah, I, I was I was pleased in the end because when Michael Keane scored that early goal, I was like. Yeah, but then when we score really goals, it doesn't necessarily go well because you do have to like then and you ha you have that lead for a very long time. Terry, what were your thoughts about the game in general? Yeah, I think Charlie's right there. I think the scoreline flattered us a little bit. Um, <clears throat> we spent large portions of the game just sort of labouring and playing quite slow and you know within ourselves. But I think it's fair to say Salford probably plays a little bit within themselves. Like every time they'd get forward, they'd sort of. You know, they, they panic a little bit and like try and force it. Wouldn't wait for a you know a, an opportunity to form or a, a good pass to be on. So I, it was one of those games where I think the lack of crowds really suited Everton because in that second half before the uh, second goal, I think the way we were playing, the crowd would have started getting on the back of the players, and that may have also buoyed the Salford players if it had have happened. But obviously that. You know, didn't happen. And once the second goal went in, obviously Everton started to loosen up. Then you know we got better combinations going, and we started to look like we started to look like the better team. Then, but for large spells of the game, it was very even. And the senior fringe players at Everton, I don't think have done anything to give Carlo Ancelotti any selection headaches going forwards. I think um, we know now that there's very much a first eleven at Everton. Um, there's a system that they're going to play at Everton, which we saw again, but with different players, the 4-3-3. Um, and it's just going to be the 11 that's at, that started at Tottenham and probably the teenagers, the only ones who really acquitted themselves last night because the, the Walcotts, the Bernards, um, even the Tom Davises. But some, some of those players mentioned have played you know, in World Cups for their country and not just any country like Brazil, England, and they just didn't. Didn't do anything in the game, so you know Bernard played okay, but he, you know he didn't stand out and make you think, oh, he's got to play next game. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed with a couple of players, but we're getting we're going to get to that later. I think it's better we start off with the positives more than anything. Um, in terms of the crowd, I completely agree. I mean, was it was it Towel who had a couple of chances? I think where they pulled it back and he kind of bled one over the bar. Uh, there was one where Ian Henderson had a header. There was, the, Salford definitely, they, they had a couple of chances where they could have scored, really. And I mean, it kind of made sense. We did have, I mean, Luca Dean at centre back, but to be fair, he did quite well. Um, I, I can't really criticise him too much for playing in a position that he, uh, he didn't play in. But Charlie, what did you think about Salford's chances? Were there, like, were there a couple where you maybe expected a goal in the end? Because chances were definitely coming at one point. I think if you look at this game purely on the statistics or the highlights, you would have thought that Salford did absolutely nothing. Um, and to be fair, they had a lot of um, possession in that second period especially, but it didn't really convert into clear-cut chances, unfortunately. Um, there were a couple, like, say, with Richie Tal, who was sort of advancing from deep, um, where he probably could have done better. And if he'd have got a goal at a certain stage, well, when it was 1-0 down, then it would have been a completely different tie. But... Um, no, it was just one of them where I think it was the quality in the final third and as Terry said, maybe a little bit panicked um, when they did get to those good positions. Um, maybe on another day it would have been a different story, but um, on a big occasion like this, it was just that composure and quality in the final third that was the real difference. Yeah, and then I'll come to you, Terry, because we'll start off with Everton stand-up performers because 
Uh, there was definitely a couple down the left-hand side that I'm sure you'll name, but what, who, were you, who were your stand-up performers in the match last night? Well, Neil's in Kung Ku, um, impressed everyone, didn't he? He looked the part, especially going forward. You know, his, his pace and his, um, his trickery was, was fantastic. Every time he got himself in dangerous positions, he, he got away from his marker. Um, Anthony Gordon grew into the game. He, um, he was good in the first half, um, but then got really good in the second half. Um, Michael Keane played all right. He, I mean, he didn't really have to exert himself, but he, he looked a class apart from the rest of the team and the rest of the players and the opposition team rather. Um, he looked like what he is. He's, you know, he's a current England international and he wasn't really uncomfortable at any point. Luca Dean, obviously as well, France international playing out of position, but he wasn't put under any pressure. I, I thought that Salford might have played on him a little bit when he went in there. And I think, I mean, I don't know, I, I, forgive me, I don't know the guy's name, but just before the second goal, they were going to bring a very, very uh, large, strong-looking striker on. I think that may have been what they were going to do. Um, start, start hitting him and having a play against Luca Dean. But, yeah, Dean, Keane um, and the two down the left were the ones who really excelled, um, I think, in Kunku. You know, he was brought in to play in the under-23s. I think you know everyone can see now from the pre-season games and from this game, yeah, he's not going to be doing that. He's going to go straight in at the um, the first-team level and deputise for Luca Dean. He's a uh, looks a bargain. Yeah, Charlie, do you agree? Because, of course, Charlie was actually at Goodison Park, so he might have had a, a slightly different view of the players. But what did you think? No, I, I think they were exceptional, both in Kunku and uh, Gordon. You know, they were giving Oscar Threlkeld, Salford's right back, an absolute torrid evening. He'll be having nightmares for days, I can guarantee it. Um, I mean, Threlkeld wasn't really getting too much support from the other Salford players on that right-hand side. So the overlap that Nkunku was offering every single time was... It just kept being used and exploited, and that's where I think Everton had most of their joy. Um, I do think it's quite interesting, though, that the two most threatening players in that Everton team were Nkunku and um, Gordon. You know, you're looking at, at an attack that's got Moise Keane and Theo Walcott and there's Kilfi Sigurdsson, who was influential from midfield, I must say, but I don't think they had as direct an impact as the two left-sided youngsters did. So I think it's a testament to those guys, but also maybe not the best um, sign for the more experienced players. Yeah, I mean, you pretty much nailed our squad on the head there. I mean, uh, we've got a lot of those kind of players who you'd expect to put in a very good performance in a, in a game like last night against lower league opposition, and then they don't. I thought Walcott was really poor. I mean, he really didn't do much at all, had very little impact. Um, then, in terms of Salford uh, standouts, we, we can definitely talk about... Uh, I'll come to Charlie first. I was very impressed with the keeper. Uh, I know you actually mentioned him before we went into the game and said he should maybe be looking after him, made a couple of good saves. Was, was he maybe your standout performer as well? Yeah, probably, yeah. Um, you know, that there's the save from Bernard to sort of tip it past the post. And then, I think it was from Walcott from close range. You know, shot-stopping-wise, he's... It's probably championship quality. You know, how on earth Salford have managed to convince him to come and play in League Two is is beyond me. You know, he keeps showing every single game that he is a very good goalkeeper and he'll put in eight, nines out of tens every single week. Um, so, yeah, I think he kept Salford in it at times where they were at risk of really slipping out the game. You know, he didn't play against Manchester United on the 21s when they were on the the wrong side of an absolute hammering. Um, and I think the fact that he was in yesterday sort of showed that um, you need those quality keepers in these games to really sort of keep your hopes alive, really. Yeah, uh, and then it's not always great to dwell on the players that didn't do so well, but I think we're going to have to. I'll come to Terry first. Um, for me, actually, I'll just kick things off. Moise Keane, I was very disappointed with. I know he ended up getting the goal in the end, uh, from the penalty, but it's not like he really had anything to do with that. After that, he maybe he actually had a couple of chances where he hit the post. Uh, so af after the penalty, he kind of grew in confidence. But for the majority of the game, I was quite disappointed with him. Terry, what were your thoughts on well, Keane and maybe some other uh, players you weren't impressed with last night? Well, Keane's the main one, isn't he? He was he was shocking. Like for most of the game, like it is every second touch was a tackle. Um, he was missing sitters. You know that header he put onto the crossbar. He had a free header in the box from an absolutely. Brilliant cross from Gilfie Sigurdsson. 
obviously he's standing right on the spot and that's, you know, I like that from a striker, you know, he needs a goal, he wants a goal, I'm having this penalty. Um, so, he, you know, he comes away from the game with the goal, move on, play better next time, but he needs to be grasping these chances. You see how well Dominic Calvert-Lewin is, you know, it was, it played against Spurs and it's, we look like we're going to play with a front three now, so he's literally competing with Calvert-Lewin for the starting spot. There's not two striker roles anymore if we're going to stick with this formation. And he just didn't do anything. He should be coming into this game, you know, Italy international, you know, and just bullying Salford's defence. And Salford didn't really have a hard time with Keane all night. Like, the only after the goal when I think Salford's heads dropped a little bit, you know, because you know, they worked hard all night and then the game got a little bit away, got away from them. That's when you start to see a little bit better from Moise Keane, but it's, it wasn't enough. He was, he was very poor. But uh, to be honest, I think the other players, it wasn't. It was the ones who didn't perform. It wasn't so much that they all played badly. It was just like, yeah, these aren't grasping this opportunity. Like John Joe Kenny didn't do anything particularly wrong, but with regards to the first eleven players, he's probably got the weakest sort of link in the chain. He's got the best chance of breaking in. Like Anthony Gordon, you know, could play as well as he liked. He's very, very unlikely to displace Richarlison if he's fit. Whereas if John Joe Kenny turns it on and makes a case, you know, he's, he makes a case for himself. Carlo Ancelotti's got a decision to make because Seamus Coleman, you know, isn't as good going forward as he used to be. So Kenny could have took his chance last night and he didn't. He, he very he played very much within himself, didn't really didn't really um, make an impression for me. And and obviously the rest speak for themselves, you know, well copped. Bernard played okay, but you know, wasn't didn't rip up any trees. And Tom Davis was Tom Davis, didn't do anything wrong, but he, you know, he's clearly not going to start if the other players are fit either. Yeah, I think it's just our luck, to be fair. We get two really good youth players come in last night, really impressed, and probably our two strongest positions in the squad that are probably, you know, least likely to be replaced, which is is what it is. I mean, it's good competition for uh, Luca Dean and Richarlison, but I mean, sadly, our two stand up performers were in positions were already uh, pretty sorted in. Uh, Charlie, who were you kind of disappointed with uh, last night from an Everton perspective? Well, I think I'd agree with Terry as well. I mean, I was looking forward to seeing Moise Keane because when he first came to the club, I thought it was a real coup for Everton because obviously a uh, Juventus starler, you know, he's scored quite a few goals in a, in a short space of time for them. Um, but it just doesn't seem to have worked out. And you could tell from last night that his confidence is absolutely shot. And um, that's something that Leon Osman said to me when we were queuing for the toilets at half time as well. He said, the ball just keeps bouncing off him. You know, he, he can't get it in. He can't, he was trying to grab the game by the scruff of the neck, but it just wasn't really working for him. Um, when he hits the, the bar with his header from, a, I think it was a Sigurdsson cross, we even mentioned it in commentary. You know, if this is a Premier League game, you get those chances, you know, two, maybe three times in the whole 90 minutes. So you've got to be scoring them if that was against, I don't know, like a Liverpool or a Manchester City. So yeah, it was really poor from him. It, it literally was either side of the keeper and it's a guaranteed goal from that area. So um, yeah, I thought Keane was disappointing. Obviously, we mentioned Walcott as well. I really thought somebody of his ability and his experience would be able to exploit that Salford back line. You know, we're talking about Ibu Torre, who was two years ago, uh, in the National League North and, you know, Jordan Turnbull, formerly of Northampton. You know, these are players that you can really get at, you know, if you're a, an FA Cup winner and, like I say, 400 Premier League appearances. But they just didn't seem to really threaten too much at all. I know it's a 3-0 scoreline, but I expected players like Keane and Walcott to be far more influential than, than they actually were. Yeah, because it's a strange like phenomenon with Moise Keane where when he starts, I mean, barring last night, when he starts, he always looks a lot better because when he comes on as a sub, maybe in the, like, the last 10, 15 minutes, he, he, a lot of the time he looks like he's trying too hard and trying to do everything at one time and it doesn't work. But he seemed to kind of just chase the game last night and I was disappointed because if there was ever a game where you really come into it, you know, you, you, you give Ancelotti you know, a, a problem now, as Terry mentioned, you're only competing with Calvert-Lewin for the one striker position. He just didn't do it at all because he, he still looks like he's trying far too hard. Constantly, you know, just running around, kind of just chasing lost balls, things like that. And it's just disappointing to see because 
he's not the same player as Calvert Lewin. He's a lot more, you know, skillful. He, he prefers to, you know, be on the ball. But yeah, he, he didn't show any of those qualities last night. I was very disappointed with him. I agree with Walcott as well. I mean, I'm not really sure what we do with Walcott. I mean, I'm pretty sure he's only around the squad really because he's the only kind of out and out right winger that we've got. I mean. I mean, we can say Hammers is going to play there now, but Walker is the only traditional right winger we've got. He, he'll also probably bring some experience on the training ground, but he is, he's, a, he's really poor. And I was, I was actually really disappointed with Tom Davis last night. Uh, I, I really don't understand still what he's, what he's meant to be doing because he hasn't developed much um, since he kind of broke out against Manchester City. And, and when he's on the ball, he doesn't look like a Premier League player at all. So I think he needs a loan, uh, if anything. Some people said that he might be a squad player. I'm not sure that would necessarily have much value. Uh, I think he'd be, he'd be much better served going to the championship, playing football on a loan, uh, then coming back. But uh, it just depends. Uh, it's up to the management, really. But uh, that's pretty much it for me. I mean, we could talk about the goals, but, I mean, one's a set piece, one's a penalty, uh, and one's a pullback. I mean, Terry, do you want to talk us through the goals? Do you have any thoughts on them at all? Uh, the second one was a big relief because I started to get that fear, that jit, those jitters before that second goal. I was like, oh, this. I, I saw, so, I mean, forgive me, I can't remember his name. I retained it last night, but I saw that big striker about to come on and was like, oh, no, here we go. And the set goes in as he's on the touchline waiting to come on. And I was like, thank God for that. <laughs> but uh, other than other than that, no, they, you know, not, not much you can't say about the goals, really, is there? Yeah. Um, Charlie, what what's kind of. I mean, we spoke about the reaction from Salford, but what, what's kind of next for Salford now? Is it is it promotion now that, that you're looking to? Now, you, now you're out of this competition as well? Yeah, I think um, you never want to go and lose a game, but I feel like in reflection of last night, Graham Alexander won't be too disappointed. I mean, speaking to him on the, on the touchline after the game, he wasn't his normal sort of downbeat self after a loss. Um, I think they sort of reflected themselves in a positive light um, it was a display that they can be proud of and yeah like I say it's about going into Grimsby now over the, over the weekend which is uh, another away trip on Saturday it's all about getting three points in that and then pushing on this season because like I said to you in the preview Graham Alexander said we're not going to win the Carabao Cup it's all about our league form and uh, that is certainly the priority and I think you can take a lot of confidence into that game on Saturday from uh, from last night because they really didn't disgrace themselves at all. You know, there were periods in that second half where, you know, they'd kept it compact at the back and were really dominating in that midfield third. And going back to what you're saying about Tom Davis, you know, I think it was Davis, Sigurdsson and Bernard almost in a midfield three at times. And they were almost getting bullied off the ball by, by Salford's midfield. And there really wasn't that golfing class that you'd expect from Premier League to to League Two, so I think it's testament to um, how disciplined Salford were last night. Uh, yeah, so there you have it. Thank you uh, very much to Terry uh, and Charlie for coming on. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, let us know your thoughts uh, about the Salford game. Were you, were you relieved in the end like Terry was when that second goal went in? I mean, I think we all were when, I mean, when Bruno Andrade came on, who scored that screamer against us for Lincoln last year, when Tom Elliott comes on from former Millwall player, it's, you know, the, the right was on the wall that we're going to concede in the end, but Managed to see it out, 3-0 win, uh, on to the next round against Fleetwood and then see see how far we can go. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, check out Charlie and Terry's social media and all the Toffee Blues social media. Uh, check out mine as well if you want. So thank you very much for watching and join us next time on the Toffee Blues. <laughs>